Hey everyone, my name is Andy Park. Welcome back to this channel. At the beginning of the year, I made a tutorial on using Microsoft To Do. And in that video, I made a commitment to use Microsoft To Do as my primary tool for managing tasks. And I said I'd report back on my experience after three to four months. I think with any system, you have to use it consistently for a few months to be able to gauge its benefit. So I'm gonna to commit to using this system for the next three to four months and hopefully report back to you on my experience. Well, it's been almost seven months now since I made that video. And one of you viewers posted a comment holding me accountable for an update. So in this video, I'll share my experience in using Microsoft To Do and how I've evolved the way I use the app as my primary task manager. So yes, I do continue to use Microsoft To Do today, but not in the way I had originally intended. At the beginning of the year, I had set out to centralize all my tasks in one place so that I didn't have to go searching for my task in different places. Every task that I needed to tackle would be captured and waiting for me in To Do. And that seemed like a good idea since the Microsoft 365 platform makes it easy to capture tasks from different applications like Outlook, Planner, Teams, and even from OneNote. And I like the fact that I can view these tasks easily from my mobile devices, like on my iPad and iPhone. And I don't even have to install the to-do app on them and I can use the stock iOS uh, reminder app. But with all this said, I still found it a bit tedious to get all of the tasks added to to-do. For simple tasks, I wasn't quite sure if I should add them to the list or not, on one hand, I felt like I shouldn't bother with these as I didn't want to get stuck in the weeds. But on the other hand, I worried that I might forget to do these tasks if I didn't get them added to the list. So there was definitely a strong psychological pressure to maintain the integrity of the system by adding every little task I needed to complete. But then I was spending too much time on maintaining the task list and it felt counterproductive. So after a few months of using to do, the whole process was becoming a major chore. I'd sit down to review the list and find that there were a bunch of duplicate tasks. For example, I would flag an email to add to my to-do list. Then when someone replied to that same email, I'd flag it again, forgetting I had already done it. So often I'd end up with these multiples of the same tasks. Also, as I completed tasks, I wasn't immediately going into the to-do app to check them off. So this, along with the duplicate task, would make the list very long. So it would become a little stressful and overwhelming to look at the list, and it would present enough friction as to not want me to review the list, unless I could dedicate a solid 30 minutes or so to review it, where I can clean up the duplicates and the completed task. All in all, I felt I was putting more into the system than I was getting out of it, I was uh, serving the tool rather than it serving me, if you know what I mean. So how did I change my process to use this tool better? The biggest tweak that I made was to focus on the more meaningful tasks. Rather than capturing and maintaining every little trivial task or tasks that are simply intended to serve as a reminder, I capture only the impactful tasks that would help advance my long-term goals. Let me give you an example. So rather than having a task like set up a meeting with the design team to review the new store design, where the act of setting up the meeting is the goal, I would have a task like align and finalize the new design format for the store's plan for renovation next fiscal, where now aligning on the final store format is the goal. You notice the difference? And yes, we don't want to make the task that is too high level where the next actions are not clear and it becomes overwhelming. So we need to find the right balance just don't keep it too granular. So we also don't want to get in the habit of creating trivial tasks just for the satisfaction of crossing them off the list. In the book, Smarter, Faster, Better by Charles Duhigg, he shares an example of someone using a to-do list for mood repair rather than for productivity, where, the, where they purposely add easy tasks simply so that they can check off the list. So yes, I am limiting my tasks to those that are more goal-oriented, and since I have a shorter list now, it's not too painful to review and prioritize them. In fact, every morning, I select three of these tasks to focus on for the day and try my best to complete them. I made this as part of my morning routine and I did make a video about this if you wanna ch check it out in the link in the card above. 
And even with this, I allow myself some flexibility. Although my goal is to check off the three prioritized tasks that I signed for myself for the day, if something else comes up that is clearly of higher priority, I'll adjust without feeling guilty. For many people, there will be strong impulse for closure here, and some would choose to complete the three tasks rather than leaving them open to tackle something else that is clearly more urgent and important. So we gotta be careful here. Again, the tool is intended to serve us, and we have total control and decision rights to make the change as needed. I think being too rigid with something like this can be counterproductive. So in conclusion, yes, I'm still using Microsoft to do, I'm being choiceful in which task I add to the list rather than adding every single trivial thing. And I'm prioritizing these tasks to complete each day so that I can make daily incremental progress towards my goals and giving myself the flexibility to adjust these priorities as new and unexpected things come up in the day without feeling guilty. Making these adjustments have reduced the friction to actually use the tool and is allowing me to be more productive. Let me know in the comments how you've been using your to-do list. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe. Thanks and bye for now.